Um, there's a part of the course that says you may you may be, be surprised at how how different the goals this course is advocating are from the goals that you hold in your mind. This is a course that is turning around and is having us go within to try to hold that constant purpose in mind to stabilize our perceptions. And what happens a lot of times when people start working with the course, I think, is there is the, the sense that many times that um, this course will ask me to give up something that is valuable, something that that I that I like and I enjoy, and that somehow there's going to be a giving up involved. So there's a sense of of sacrifice um, at times when people work with the course. And I think one of the things that we can look at with that idea is that uh, sacrifice is an idea in the mind. And it's a very, very, very deeply rooted idea. In, in a metaphysical sense, the mind has turned away from the light and is kind of identified with the self-concept in all these this form. And basically, it, it's afraid of the light. And so to go towards the light now, it believes that it has to give us things of real value, things that it's very familiar with now, things that it's very accustomed to the status quo, you know, the certain things about the status quo that the mind likes, <laughs> and that it's seen as, uh-oh, you know, I don't want to rock the boat, I don't want to change the status quo. Another way we could talk about it is kind of like the world, the way that the mind defends against the Holy Spirit is it, it orders all of the thoughts in its mind. So even though these are just thoughts that are images, it's the ordering of the thoughts is where the judgment comes in. We were talking a little bit tonight about the idea of judgment, and one of the common ways of looking at judgment is to condemn, to condemn your brother. But, but when we get to this whole idea of ordering the images and the hierarchy of illusions, this is where judgment kind of takes on a more finer point, because then you start getting into the subtlety of preference. Um, and remember, it, those subtleties are still important because from those ordering, from those self-concepts that I hold, goals come forth, and that's where those expectations come in that we were just talking about, you know. Even if it's something as simple as, um, you know, you're driving down, you see an open parking space, and you're trying to get there, and somebody comes around and, and gets in there, you know, and you feel a little bit of a frustration that somebody beat you to the parking space. Well, you know, there was an expectation. That's mine. <laughs> I picture myself in that parking space or whatever. So, it's very subtle. May I share a thought? Sure. Because um, I've heard you say that before, and it got heard to me today as I was listening to one of Watney's tapes, and he talks about it in you know, fact, you know, interpretation. So there was this open parking place, somebody else took it, and so what we do with it, we interpreted that somebody took my parking place. Somehow that became clear to me, um, I mean, in other ways, and there is an expectation, but somehow it's my second place. Like somebody intentionally took it away from me because yeah. I feel victimized. Yes. And there is that sense of, I mean, why would it, why would it be offensive unless there was, we could trace it back to something that was offending me? And there's that me again. What the, the, the fundamental question is, who is the me? I'd be more concerned about the dynamics, which are a little bit reverse of that. Suppose I pull into the parking lot and I see a space and I'm oblivious to the fact that another person is aiming toward that space and I get this parking space. But I get out of the car and here's a driver that's behind me who is red in the face and just about bursting at the seams. Now, do I bear any responsibility because I was insensitive to uh, his sense of ownership? Yeah, I think the thing about it, once we, if we break it down and kind of look at the parts and start to come from that, we can get, it, it can get away real quick, but it, we have to get back to that idea of purpose. One of the really neat lines in the Course is that under the Holy Spirit's teaching that there aren't any losers, that everyone gains. In fact, the whole sonship gains from every decision that the Holy Spirit, we make with the Holy Spirit. So, and I think mm -hmm. underneath what you were saying too is, is can in any way, shape, or form, can, can one cause any kind of upset, or is there responsibility involved for other people's feelings in any way, shape, or form, even in any degree? You know, I think that's a very core issue. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're, what we, the course is teaching is that no, it is absolutely, there is, you have complete responsibility 
for your own state of mind. In fact, Jesus even simplifies it further, and he says the sole responsibility of the teacher of God is to accept the atonement for himself. <laughs> or as I like to say, it's my lesson. <laughs> now, if, if I'm really at peace, if I really am in a defenseless place, you know, it's not a matter of kind of this and that, if I really am completely defenseless, then automatically the Holy Spirit will, will I will perceive this is a call for love, you know, in my brother. And automatically, whatever that response is to be, it may just be a smile, it may be just a, a, a kind word, or maybe there'll be words or something, but see, that, the behavior is completely involuntary. In other words, we're not responsible for choosing our, our behaviors. We're responsible for lining up with the Holy Spirit, and as soon as we do that, whatever comes through is our, will, will be most helpful for the whole sonship. So, but it's really a, cr a crucial thing because all of the guilt, as soon as I believe that I can, can upset someone else, or that someone else can upset me, either way, then I'm back down to that helplessness and powerlessness again because there's something, there's actual harm that can be done, you know, from something on the screen going away I didn't want to or something like that. I think that's a, that's a key issue. So, so you're, you're saying that the core is to be clear in your own center. Um, and then, in other words, it isn't to be clever enough to respond in the right way, which is uh, the way psychology would approach it or something like that. Uh, it is simply just to be clear in your own center and then trust that the automatic response because of the own clarity, that's where you started tonight, was clarity, your own clarity, at least, that you're responsible you can trust your response within that awareness. I mean, I mean, I still have to own the fact that I'm there. I, I am not usually at what I would call perfect peace. You know, it's sort of relative peace, maybe, uh, in, in that in my own experience. Uh, and there's always a little bit of my cage that can rattle under uh, uh, some circumstances. But I recognize that my cage is rattling, and I'm responsible for that part of it. But uh, I guess um, it, it's been an interesting awareness to try and understand. Uh, it becomes more complex because I also have the feeling that maybe this was a technique that was being applied to me to, to shock me out of my complacency or my certainty or or whatever, I don't know, that's, that's just a mental game, whether that may or may not have been. But it was, uh, it was an interesting experience, uh, and I just, I, I guess part of it is, to, is I still have that aspect of maybe feeling that there ought to be some level at which one could understand the dynamics, at least from the standpoint of the course, you know, as to uh, maybe you won't know why or, or even how, but, uh, and I guess, I guess the question I'm asking is, uh, I certainly felt relatively at peace, if not even deeply at peace, but it didn't have the, any appearances of what one would normally term a peaceful situation. Uh, and that's, I guess, where I'm raising the question. Uh, if we were truly at peace with the situations that surround us, be truly at peace? Or can one be truly at peace and uh, have a bomb dropped on? Yeah, it's, what, what we're getting at is that it's not peace, mm -hmm. it's not situational, or it's not tied into appearances in any way. Yeah. In other words, you know, Jesus is a good example too of, of accepting the atonement and just choosing to see the world differently, and yet what seems to go on on the screen seems to go on, including maybe even a may, an angry mob yelling, crucify him! <laughs> maybe like thousands of them in one accord, which, you know, in any way, shape, or form, you may not consider that peaceful, <laughs> even by any standard of definition. But it's the, in the Course he's saying, I did not share their perception. He did not perceive it as an attack. And therefore, it was holding on to that torch of peace, regardless of what was going on on the screen, so to speak. So that, for me, that's a good extreme example of, it's just my choice. And I have to, I have to be very clear, though, and when we get back to that, it gets back to clarity. That there's a, there's a part in the Course that says, um, 
that the Holy Spirit has only two orders of thought, that he perceives everything as love or a call for love. And it says, you are too bound to form to perceive consistently like the Holy Spirit perceives. And not to, you're too bound to form and not to content. So it gets back to when we have definitions of who people are, what certain behaviors mean, you know, even the, the, the judgment of whether the shock technique or something like that, whenever we start to interpret the behaviors, we get, we get away from what's my purpose, what, what am I to be holding on to, and we get kind of out there on the screen, and that's where the reaction comes in. It is certain that I'm describing more form than I am content. Mm -hmm. And I think from a, from a deeper perspective, it's kind of like the mind denied all these attack thoughts and tried to push them out of awareness. And then the, another way that the ego counsels it, the reason, the way to get rid of attack thoughts is to project them out onto the screen. So that you can consider that everything that we see, that we would, if you call maybe a frightening situation, is literally the form has become a concrete, concretized form of fear. That I don't, I don't, there's something in my mind that I can't accept and look at and take responsibility of just a, a, a thought that I had or that I made up, that I don't want to look at that. So I keep it buried and unconscious and then I project it out and therefore I see something that's objectionable in someone else or some other situation or thing. That's the dynamics, the, the deeper dynamics that are going on beneath what we're talking about. Well, I guess I would go back to the earlier part of the question, which was germane to, did I attract this to myself by some awareness? In other words, that's, that's one metaphysical uh, gambit that some people play with. That, uh, you know, I can accept the Course's sense that all things are lessons that he would have us learn, and I guess I've been dealing with what's the lesson, you know, and that's what you're really yeah. thinking about. But there is this sense in which uh, nothing comes into our lives but that we ask for it in, at some level. And I'm saying, uh, I guess you, I heard you say, did Jesus ask to be crucified? Well, at one level, no, and at another level, yes. Uh, Part of a teaching kind of demonstration. That's a good point you bring up, though, because it's like there is a line in the Course that says, everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked, which kind of hits right on the head with what you're saying. What happens, though, is people will take a metaphysical idea like that, which is responsibility, and we are responsible for accepting the atonement. The only thing we're responsible for is to choosing to be in our right mind, to choose the Holy Spirit. What happens is, once you get down and you bring that statement of responsibility into the level of form, then you're getting into guilt. They take an idea like, I am responsible, I attract things to me, and then cancer. You can see now we're going to we're going to confuse the levels, and you're going to see immediately how the guilt comes in. I am I attracted this cancer to me. Whack 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 whack. I mean, how can one make a statement like that and not feel guilt? You know, I'm I'm doing the course wrong. I should do better. I should be able to heal myself. You know, it doesn't so much matter where you go from there. But there's there's an I am responsible statement, which is up here at the level of the right mind. I am responsible for choosing the right mind. But then once I, I, I raise body thoughts, once I bring the cancer and the body up and I try to raise it to the level of mind, and I hook my self-responsibility in with that, that behavior or that form which I'm judging is terrible and awful, the guilt automatically results. <coughs> so well, once again, it's kind of like it's, it's bringing the mind to see that the only way the correction can take place is by changing our thoughts. That there's no amount of changing our behaviors, as much as we'd like to say, if I'd only done this different, if I'd only had a mammogram, or if I'd only, you know, had a lot of beta carotene, or, you know, starting to come up with all the if-onlys, but to say, wait a minute, I'm not going to look at the behavioral level. I have a choice this instant, and I want to I want to perceive this situation differently. I want to I want to link with a different thought system in my mind at the thought level that can give me a different way of perceiving this. I want to choose right-mindedness. That's, that's the way out. That's the direction. Hey, Jim, David, the thought just occurred to me. Uh, when I was taking science of mind classes, talking about the importance of, of clarifying exactly what you're treating for. Uh, and one example I heard was that if I trying to pray for patience, then I probably won't get a lot of things coming in my life that are going to teach me patience. 
if I can get on past that area to the acceptance level and accept